Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Like subscribe and share with your fellow denarian friends. To help support our channel we now accept tips using the blockchain based Brave browser and BAT tokens. It makes a huge difference and is very much appreciated. To those of you that made a contribution, I sincerely thank you very much. If you are interested in making a few extra bucks by using the latest technology, use the blockchain-based Secure Brave browser. Also, if you have not done so yet, pick up your free trial copy of the Currency Exchange Planner and check out the awesome new Currency Exchange Planner companion, voted the number one exchange planner in the Dinar community. Both the links to the Brave browser as well as the Currency Exchange Planner are below this video. First article of interest for today. Parliament holds an emergency session on Monday to vote on the Alawi government. Shafak News The official Iraqi news agency reported on Friday that Parliament will hold an emergency session next Monday to vote on granting confidence to the government of Prime Minister-designate Mohammad Tawfiq Alawi. The agency quoted unnamed sources as saying that the parliament will hold an extraordinary session next Monday after sending a letter from Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi requesting the session be held. She added that the session also comes at the request of the members of the House of Representatives, which amounted to 76 signatures and more and according to the provisions of Article 58 of the Constitution. The special session must be held to vote on the ministerial curriculum and the government booth for the Commissioner Mohammad Tawfiq Alawi. A source close to Alawi had revealed to Shafiq News that the latter had invited members of parliament to attend at exactly 6 o'clock in the evening to the government palace to inform them of his government program and the curriculum vita of the candidates for the portfolios. Alawi announced, on Wednesday, that he has completed the selection of his government which he said consists of independent ministers who are competent away from the influence of the parties, calling on Parliament to hold a session next Monday to give it confidence. The caretaker head, Adel Abdel Mahdi, wrote a letter to Parliament, Thursday, inviting him to hold an emergency session on Monday to give confidence to the government of his successor. However, passing the government will not be easy given that Alawi did not reach understandings with the delegation of the Kurdistan region, as well as prominent Sunni powers as well as Christians regarding his prospective government. Next article of interest. Parliamentary optimism by passing Alawi's cabinet in parliament. Member of the House of Representatives and head of the Bayrak al Air parliamentary bloc, Mohammed al khaldi expressed his optimism about passing the cabinet of designated Prime Minister Mohammed Tawfiq Alawi inside the Parliament Dome. Alka Alidi said in a press statement that Alak Beria followed, about 76 deputies asked the presidency of the Parliament to hold a session on Monday, while the number required to hold a session is 50, noting that there is more than one mechanism for holding the extraordinary session. Alka Alidi said, it is expected that the required number will be reached for the session to take place, noting that he is optimistic about the possibility of passing the government by a majority. Next article of interest. Source. Ministers control major contracts and prevent the entry of solid companies into Iraq. An official source in the Governmental Integrity Commission tasked with pursuing corruption revealed that there are ministers who control major contracts and prevent the entry of solid companies into Iraq. The source told, Alec Beria, that, most political parties holding power, have economic committees that are tasked with obtaining commercial contracts for the benefit of their subsidiaries. He added, every party minister has a group of companies that get major contracts which usually do not perform service work and have no experience in the field of business, but they prevent the entry of solid companies to compete with them. After 17 years of successive governments, Iraq, which is floating on seas of oil, still lacks basic services such as electricity and clean water, along with a near collapse in the health and education systems. The law we pledged in his first speech after the commissioning to work to inventory the economic committees of the political factions as part of his government program, which was considered by observers as a major challenge difficult to achieve. Next article of interest. 
Trade proposes to hold the Baghdad exhibition in April after it was postponed due to the demonstrations. The Ministry of Commerce revealed a proposal to set up the Baghdad International Fair in its new session next April, after it was scheduled for last October and was postponed due to the demonstrations. The ministry spokesman, Mohammed Hanoun, said in a press statement, the ministry has resumed its activities regarding the establishment of specialized exhibitions and the Baghdad International Fair, pointing out that there is a proposal to establish the Baghdad International Fair in its new session next April. He added, after the stability of the security situation, the Ministry of Commerce started its first activity, which will start with the establishment of the International Book Fair next month in the Baghdad Fair, under the auspices of the Prime Minister. The Ministry of Trade had decided, earlier, to postpone the establishment of the Baghdad International Fair, its 46th session, which was scheduled to be held in November 2019, until further notice, due to the events of the demonstrations in the country. Next article of interest. China intensifies pursuit of de-dollarization with digital currency. Earlier this week, we covered the Federal Reserve's pursuit of a central bank digital currency, CBDC, based on the blockchain and dubbed FedCoin. It turns out that China is also pursuing its own version of a CBDC, and while the consequences of such a move for Americans would be very different than those of a FedCoin, they have the potential to be even more dire. What's more, Beijing could be even closer to implementation than the Fed is. Vila Ledinverda a senior research fellow at Oxford, was quoted on courts explaining a few advantages, to China, of its version. A CBDC could have several advantages from a central bank's perspective. One is winning back more direct control over money supply, to use as a monetary policy lever. In a CBDC system, the central bank could bypass banks and influence consumers directly. According to an article on Ledger Insights, one key difference between FedCoin and China's CBDC is that the latter isn't likely to be based on blockchain technology. Therefore, it wouldn't be a true cryptocurrency like the planned FedCoin. Instead, it will have a two-tier structure involving the central bank issuing the currency to banks or institutions, with these banks circulating the currency amongst their customers and the digital cash will be 100% backed by central bank deposits from commercial banks and institutions. The same article goes on to highlight that China has been pursuing their digital currency since 2014, and there are 996 staff at the Digital Money Institute. With the kind of manpower, it's no wonder that a recent Bloomberg piece revealed the People's Bank of China is close to issuing its own cryptocurrency. The Bloomberg article doesn't share a specific timeline, but Wang Jin at the People's Bank of China offered a hint of clarification on Regulation Asia, stating, A digital currency issued by the central bank can improve the efficiency of monetary policy and help to optimize the payment system. We had an early start, but lots of work is needed to consolidate our lead. No matter if China's CBDC could be close or lots of work is still needed, they appear serious about implementing it. And even the possibility that this digital currency could soon exist should raise a red flag. That's because China's effort to create a CBDC is really part of an overall strategy of de-dollarization. Another way for China to put a dent in the US dollar's hegemony. According to a recent five-minute forecast from Magura Financial, China's central bank has filed more than 80 patents as part of the push to create a digital currency. The patents include proposals related to the issuance and supply of a central bank digital currency, a system for interbank settlements that uses the currency and the integration of digital currency wallets into existing retail bank accounts. Sure seems like China could be creating an alternative to the US dollar for transactions. And this isn't the first time they've pursued alternate economic channels for trade with the goal in mind. Jim Rickards has even suggested that countries like China may be building toward a gold-backed digital currency, which would make their currency an even stronger competitor to the US dollar, if it came to fruition. Thankfully, according to Rickards, 
China hasn't yet amassed enough gold to reach strategic parity with the U.S. dollar, so at this time they may be unable to implement a gold-backed digital currency. But in spite of that, China appears to be closer to introducing a digital currency than we might think, according to Gal Lufton and Corin, authors of the book Day Dollarization. First, it is already a de facto cashless society. The largest banknote in circulation is 100 yuan, about $15, making big cash transactions cumbersome. While cash is not practical, credit cards have never become mainstream in the country. This is why China has become the leading society in mobile payments. Even though the ideal move might be to wait until they amass enough gold, who knows what China will do to dethrone the dollar. And don't forget about Russia and Saudi Arabia which may join forces with China to kill the dollar. Even Sweden has recently started real-world testing of the world's first CBDC, called the e-krona, which proves the idea is beginning to take off. Bottom line, the US dollar is being targeted by other nations, and CBDCs are more ammo in their arsenal. Whether countries like China are successful remains to be seen. As the dollar weakens gold tends to get stronger. The U.S. dollar has maintained a hegemony as the global reserve currency since 1944. In 2010, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development suggested it be replaced because of the instability of its value on the global market. For various reasons, China, Russia, and other countries want to weaken and eventually dethrone the dollar to gain a foothold in global trade. Whether they succeed or not, it's a good idea to hedge against a weakening dollar. Hit the like and subscribe button to be alerted as more articles of interest are posted. Be sure to visit Mytanarian blog, Facebook and Twitter for all of today's articles of interest. Pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded currency exchange planner before you leave. Use the promo code, thedenarian, and get 25% off at checkout when you decide to unleash the full planner's abilities along with the mobile application added free for being my subscriber. Register today as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program. If you do not keep your savings in a real asset like gold, you risk everything as the fiat system fails and they boot up the new quantum financial system on the blockchain. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold, as tomorrow may be too late. The program is made so everyone can afford to save in gold by offering it one gram at a time. Start saving in a real true asset like gold, it's free to register and secure your family's savings tomorrow. Why do you think all the central banks are loading up on gold lately, and running from the current depreciating fiat US dollar? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected. Both of the links to these invaluable programs are available in the description box below this video, go check them out. Knowledge is power, using that newfound knowledge is powerful. Over and out, for now, the Denarian.